On this episode of uh, Around the World in 40 Tales, I am here. My name is Doreen Vanderstoep, and I'm here with my fellow Storytelling Alberta member, Mindy Wolcott. Welcome, Mindy. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So we are so grateful for your gift of story today, Mindy. Mindy has a, uh, a story by award-winning writer, Kevin Henkes from Madison, Wisconsin. So our story travels today take us to the UN, sorry, the US. <laughs> so Mindy, I just wanna tell everybody a little bit more about you. Mindy is a retired French immersion learning disabilities teacher who used folk tales and fables and legends extensively in her profession. She values the emotional connection that the sharing of stories now brings to her and her six grandchildren. Now, before we dive in, we just want to acknowledge that Storytelling Alberta operates on the traditional territories of the Indigenous signatories to Treaties 4, 6, 7, and 8. And this land includes the Métis settlements and the Métis Nation of Alberta. We make this declaration in the spirit of reconciliation and deep respect. So, Mindy, are you ready? Ready to go. Ready okay. to go. Yes. Go for it. Um, Thank you. Hello, everyone. We've all been students at school in our lives, and some of us were naughty, and some of us were nice, and some of us even went on to become teachers. And I used this book when I was teaching, and I just want to offer the story for the young at heart uh, for a little bit of fun looking back at our school days. Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. Lily loved school. She loved the pointy pencils. She loved the squeaky chalk. And she loved the clickety clack, clickety clack, clickety clack of her boots as she went down the polished corridor. She also loved the privacy of her own desk. And she loved the snacks that were served in the cafeteria on Fridays, fish sticks and chocolate milk. But most of all, she loved her teacher, Mr. Slinger. Now, Mr. Slinger was as sharp as a tack. He wore artistic shirts and a different colored tie for every day of the week. His glasses had a silver chain on them. Wow said Lily. That's all she could say when she saw him. Wow! Mr. Slinger was not your average teacher because instead of greeting the students with good morning boys and girls, he would wink and he would say howdy. And he thought desks in rows were silly and old-fashioned and so he put them in semicircles. Yes, Mr. Slinger was a good example for Lily, and she said to her classmates, I want to be a teacher when I grow up. At home, Lily would practice her school teaching on her baby brother, Julius, and she asked her parents for a deluxe set of picture encyclopedias, like the ones Mr. Slinger had, because teachers know everything. What's with Lily, said her father. I think it's because of her new teacher, said her mother. I thought you wanted to be a surgeon or a, an ambulance driver or a diva, said her father. Hmm, said her mother. At school, Lily would line up in the bus line when Mr. Slinger was on duty, even though she never took the bus home. She was the first one in class to pop up her hand even though she didn't always know the answer. And she volunteered at the end of the school day to clap the blackboard erasers. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That's all he could say. Wow. In the classroom, there was a light bulb lab, which was the area that Mr. Slinger had set up for the students to creatively express their ideas in picture and word. Lily went there often. She had many ideas. And one afternoon, she drew a picture of Mr. Slinger. Big friendly, 
Mr. Nice Man Teacher. Wow, said Mr. Slater. Again, that's all he could say. Wow. Now, one Monday morning, Lily was anxious, very anxious to get to school because her Grammy had taken her shopping and her Grammy had bought her a purple plastic purse that played a jaunty tune when it was opened, as well as movie star sunglasses with glittery diamonds on the side and a chain just like Mr. Slinger's. And Grandma let her keep the three shiny quarters that were the change. So that morning during story time, as Lily clutched her possessions tightly to her, she was itchy to share. Not now, said Mr. Slater. Listen to the story, Lily. Lily had a hard time listening. Lily, be considerate of your classmates, said Mr. Slater. Lily had a hard time being considerate. And then she fiercely whispered, look everyone, look what I've got. And everyone looked, including Mr. Slinger, and he was not impressed. I'll just take those things from you, Lily, and I'll put them in my desk. They'll be safe there. You can get them at the end of the day. Perhaps you can bring them back another time when you can use them in sharing circle. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. She, she, she longed for her purse, her shiny quarters, her glittery glasses. And she was too sad to even eat the snacks, those curly, crunchy, cheesy snacks that Mr. Slinger always offered before recess. Later that afternoon, she went to the light bulb lab and she sat and she felt sad and then she felt mad. And she thought and thought some more, and then she felt furious, and she drew a picture of Mr. Slinger. Big fat mean stealing teacher. I don't want to be a teacher when I grow up. And she put that picture into Mr. Slinger's book bag. She snuck it in when no one was looking. That afternoon, when all the children were zipped and tied and buttoned, Mr. Slinger strolled over. Here are your things, Lily. Your glasses are fabulous. The quarters are pretty jingly. And that purse is really excellent. You can bring them back another day for sure. And Lily marched out of the classroom with her things and she said, I do not want to be a teacher. Now, on the way home, she opened her purple plastic purse. Everything was there, and there was a note. And the note said, Dear Lily, today was a difficult day. Tomorrow will be better. And at the bottom of the purse, a little bag of the delicious, cheesy, crunchy snacks. Lily felt terrible. Her stomach lurched again and she ran home as fast as she could to tell her mother and father everything that had happened. Then she put herself in her uncooperative chair and counted to a thousand instead of watching her favorite cartoons. And later that night, she drew another picture of Mr. Slinger and she wrote him a note. Her mother also wrote a note and her father baked some lovely snacks to share the next day. I think Mr. Slinger will understand, said her father. I'm sure, I'm sure he will, said her mother. The next morning, Lily arrived at school and gave Mr. Slinger all the goodies. He read the two notes and he looked at the picture. Wow, wow, that's all he could say. And then, and then, Mr. Slinger did something. He 
he said to Lily, we're going to put this old picture in the garbage. What do you think of that? And she said, that's a good idea, Mr. Slinger, because I really, 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 really am sorry. And I do want to be a teacher when I grow up. I really do. With her goodies, Lily was able to do a performance. It's called interpretive dance, she said. And Mr. Slinger joined in to the delight of all the students. Wow! That's all they could say was, wow! And so Lily had had a better day. Mr. Slinger had said it would be a better day, and it was. And she would be a teacher. That is, unless she wanted to be a surgeon or or maybe an ambulance driver, or, or maybe a diva. The end. Thank you, Mindy, for that delightful story. Oh my goodness, that Lily, she's a spirited one. Is that what you were like when you were young? I was fairly spirited, got into a little bit of trouble, and sometimes I forgot things for long periods of time, but they eventually came back. <laughs> Well, you handled that beautifully and you told the story beautifully. Thank you so much for your gift of story. I just want to tell everybody, if you want to contact Mindy or anyone at Storytelling Alberta, then please email us at storytellingalberta at gmail.com and make sure you check out our website, storytellingalberta.com, because there you'll be able to see all of our 40th anniversary story recordings for your viewing pleasure. So we'll be back. We'll be back next week again with another tale to tell around the world. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Doreen.